<laughs> anyway, it started. It started out in uh, 2003. Uh, I came from a Christian household. My father is a pastor. Still is a pastor to this day. My mother, she passed away when I was 16, but she also was a very serious, staunch Christian. Most of my family are Christians. The ones who claim that they're Christian, they don't really go to church, but, you know, they just want to sit in. That's them. Me, I didn't claim Christianity, even though I grew up as a Christian. I really didn't claim it and believe in it because it just something just didn't, didn't sound right to me. As a kid, you know, the Trinity was so confusing, I just said, forget it. It, it, it wasn't even explainable, you know. I, I just, my, my, even though my dad said, well, you got to believe it. But I'm like, well, if, if God created everything, you know, then why do we have to pray to Jesus? You know, I never understood this. You know, so I prayed to God. So it doesn't make any sense that, you know, if God's so powerful that you got to pray to a human being in order to respond. You know, it, it makes no sense. So all the questions I used to ask when I was a kid never, you know, reached the answer. You know, like I would ask him, my father about the Trinity, or I would ask him about, you know, if Jesus was God, why didn't he take himself down from the cross? You know, stuff like that. And my dad would just, would just have to believe. And me, I was always a very inquisitive person. So, and then I didn't like, because I said so, or, you know, because you got to believe it. I didn't like those kind of answers. They weren't satisfying. So I just decided to become agnostic at one point. I just said, oh, you know, I believe there's a God. But I don't know what religion to go to. So I'm just going to just be here until something happens, you know. So after I got on my own when I was 16, I worked hard. I basically worked all the time, long hours, just so I could, you know, make myself happy. You know, I was trying to fill a void in my life that I had, you know, by trying to get all the money that I can. Well, I can still on what I'm to love that I And, you know, just trying to get all the friends that I could get, just so I could try to fill the empty hole in my life, you know, but at, at the end of the day, even though I had my friends and my parties and my money and stuff, I still wasn't happy, it just, I was dissatisfied with my life and the way it was going, like, oh, what's wrong, you know, what, what am I missing? So, fast forward to 2003, I'm still trying to, you know, fill this empty void, you know, <laughs> I don't know, and all of a sudden, I guess this is what I call the wake call from a lost upon a tower. You know, because I became very arrogant after a lot. It's okay. <laughs> I, I became very arrogant, unfortunately, because of all of the you know, stuff that I had and everything else. And I wasn't saying I was a rich person, you know, because I wasn't, but I was comfortable. And it was a lot better than where I grew up at. I grew up as a very poor kid. So, you know, having what I had, even though the average person may say, oh, whatever, you're just middle class. I thought I was rich, honestly. I thought I was the richest person in the land. <laughs> you know, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me a wake-up call, and all at once, I'm telling you, all at once, I lost my job, I lost my place to live, and I lost my friends. Within the course of one or two days, welcome back, sister, I lost everything. I didn't have no job, and because I didn't have no job, I was living with my great-grandmother at the time, because I didn't have a job, she didn't want me to live with her. So I lost my place to live. Because I had no place to live and no job, my friends didn't want to be friends with a homeless person. So they just basically ditched me. All at once. SubhanAllah. I didn't know what to do. I was like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> Why did I lose my job? I lost my job because at that time I was only like 18 years old. I just turned 18. And I was about to take on a supervisor position in the hospital that I worked at. And the lady that was the supervisor at the time, uh, she didn't like the fact that she was almost 40 years old and she finally got this position and here's an 18 year old about to take her job. So basically I got set up. I got set up, you know, when I got, I fell ill while I was working and I had to take the rest of the day off and she fired me for that. SubhanAllah, it was crazy. Yes, I, I, that's, that's why I lost my job. To this day I still can't wrap my head around it. But that's what happened, you know. She was jealous of someone who was just at 18. Exactly. I don't know about Susan. I don't know about appeals and all this other stuff, you know. I'm just thinking, oh, well, I lost my job. That's the end of it, you know. I don't know. I, I guess I'm toast. 
you know, if, if I knew now, then what I know now, trust me, I would have appealed it. I would have, I would have been suing and everything else. It would, it would, she would have been, she would have known what would have happened to her. So, well, they can form a lesson code like that too. But I gave up. I said, well, you know, I don't know what else to do. I've had this job for over two years. You know, I was working hard and, and I guess I didn't work hard enough and my friends don't like me because I'm unemployed and homeless. You know, my great grandmother, she, subhanAllah, you know, unfortunately she's one of those people who, who are driven by the dollar. And if you don't have the dollars, you don't want to have nothing to do with you, especially if you're living in her house. And so I had, I, she basically told me I had to leave. Yeah, I left home when I was 16 years old too. As my mom died, I left home. I actually moved to Washington. So I was, I basically been on my own at home, except for the time I lived with my great grandmother. Yeah. So I wound up living with a friend of mine that I knew that lived in Ohio. And mind you, at this time I was living in Michigan. This is where I was born and raised. And so a friend of mine in Ohio, he heard about what I was, you know, what I was going through. And he said, well, why don't you come down here and stay with me and you can get a job down here and get back on your feet, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. You know, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So I go to Ohio. I live with this person. And things didn't work out that well. It just seemed like the humbling experience was just beginning, you know, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really wanted me to get down to a humble level. You know, I was still thinking, yeah, there's light at the end of the tunnel, things are going to be better. But it just got worse. We could not stop fighting. And so, me being naive and everything else, I didn't know what to do. I said, I got to get out of here because things are getting bad and someone's going to want to fight with somebody. And, you know, it's really horrible. So, I'm sitting at this bus stop next door, kind of far away from where I was living at in Ohio. And this man came up to me and I just started telling him about basically the story of my life. You know, I was so depressed. So I just kept talking and talking and talking to this person, and they said, well, hey, why don't you come and stay with me? I need a roommate. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. You know, I wasn't really thinking, well, maybe I shouldn't do this because this person I've only known for about four hours. <laughs> you know, I shouldn't do this. But me being in a desperate state and I was really trying to get back to where I was, I said, okay. So I wound up living with this person. To make a long story short on this end, he stole almost everything that I owned from me and sold it to the people that lived in the neighborhood. And I found this out when I went to one of the people, you know, that was in the neighborhood that was a friend of his, and I just happened to see one of my books. And I'm thinking, why is things disappearing? I'm like, where did you get that from, you know? He's like, oh, yeah, this, that guy you're living with, he sold it to me. I'm like, uh, what? So please, the police said the only thing that we can do is, you know, take you out of here and take a shelter. I'm thinking in my mind, I will never go to a shelter. Shelter is beneath me, da 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 But guess what? That's where I wound up. <laughs> SubhanAllah. So half of my belongings were stolen. I'm living in a shelter. At this point, I don't know what to do now. I'm like, okay, I don't have a job still. I'm still homeless. I still don't have no friends. SubhanAllah, what's going on, you know? I, so I said, you know, I, I said, you know, God, I'm sorry. I haven't prayed to you in many years, but what did I do wrong? What in the world did I do to deserve this? I'm a good person. I feed people, you know, I, I, I don't get in trouble and, you know, I don't commit crimes and everything. So why is this happening to me, you know? So I went to that night. This was my night, first night I was in the shelter. And so, like, by, you know, I'm, like, depressed and everything. Like, I don't know what to do with my life. And I'm, like, I'm going to just wind up being a crazy cat lady with all the bags and, you know, with a shopping cart living outside. You know, I, I, this, is, this is not what I wanted. But this is what it was, seemed like the world was happening until one day, one day, there were these women at the shelter that I was living at, and they were talking about this man who prayed to the sun. Now, this still cracks me up to this day, you know. They said, hey, there's this man, he goes to this park, there's this park right across the way from where the shelter was, and they said, he always prays to the sun in the park. Okay. And, you know, I, I was like, well, I need to know who this person is. I really do. I was waiting you know, for how to get my life. So, you know, at least, at least he has some of So I was like, so they told me. And they said, he's always out there at this time, and he's always praying fun. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and, and figure out who this person is. So the next thing, I went to the park, you know, and... I was swimming and I saw him. He was praying and he had to but they weren't praying with him. 
you know, they were just talking or whatever. And so I sat down, kind of, kind of a distance away, but enough to where they could see me. And I waited till he was done inside. Then after he was done praying, which I thought, watching him pray, it was the weirdest thing I ever seen, you know? Like, why is he kissing the ground and all this, you know? <laughs> it was kind of weird to me at the time. So I, I mean, I'm kind of shy, you know, especially in person. On the microphone, I can talk all day. But in person, I, I will I say I'm too much, you know? And so I'm trying to signal them to come over, and I'm trying to do it in kind of a weird way, you know, kind of shy, I don't know, and everything. So his friends kind of get his attention, like, hey, that girl wants to talk to you, kind of thing. So he comes over, you know, and he kind of away from me, you know, but on the same bench, but away, very careful not to touch me, and I thought that was weird. You know, so then I said, uh, yeah, I said, hi, and I, I told him what my name was and everything, and I introduced myself, and then I said, you know, I have some questions to ask you. He said, yeah, sure, you know, I said, why do you pray to the sun? And he looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> he was like, I don't pray to the sun. I pray to Allah. And I'm thinking, who in the world, what is Allah? And, you know, so I said, what's this Allah? He said, no, not what, who? I'm like, okay, well, who is Allah? He said, Allah is, you know, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Who you would say, God. I said, oh, okay, all right, cool. I said, tell me about what your beliefs are. I started to tell me about his son. Mommy. And mind you, mind you, I, I grew up with, where I lived at, not trying to divert myself too much, but I grew up in an area in Dearborn, if anyone ever heard of Dearborn, Michigan. There's a lot of Muslims there. I grew up around Islam all my life, but I didn't know what it was except for what I thought I knew from the Malcolm X movie, which was the nation of Islam, and that's what I thought Islam was. And so I never even gave it a second thought because I said, I don't want to be a part of anything that teaches racism. And so when he's telling me about Islam, I said, well, how could you be a, 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 in, in Islam when you're not African-American? And he just looked at me like, he was, and then he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, you got to be African-American to be in Islam, right? And he's like, no. You know, <laughs> what do you, well, you might be thinking about the nation of Islam, and that's not Islam. I said, oh, okay. So he kind of started to come together a little bit. I said, okay, well, tell me more. So he told me about it. The article was the five pillars of Islam and the six articles. And he stopped. He said, okay, I'll tell you more tomorrow. I'm like, well, no, I want to know more. You know, I, I was really, I was really soaking it in. Like, okay, this sounds cool. This really sounds interesting and it sounds simple and it sounds like this might be the answer to all of my problems. So I said, okay, well, you know, I could hardly sleep, you know, that night. I was like, I want to know more. I want to know more about this religion, you know. I'm getting excited, you know, and so I, I finally made myself go to sleep the next morning. I hunted him down. You know, I was like, I want to know more about your religion. I want to know more about Islam. Tell me more. So he told me more, and this time he actually burned his Quran. He said, this is our holy book. He was careful to let me, not let me really let me touch it, and, you know, he's like, oh, I don't really want you to touch it, but I read it. You know, I was reading the Quran. I didn't read it all the way through, but he showed me certain verses to everything about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only one and you know even in the Bible itself you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said not to associate any partners with him and it even said it in the Quran and I'm like wow okay this is beginning to make more sense and when he came to the part where you know it was proven that Isa alayhi salam was only a prophet I said aha bingo I knew it I knew something was fishy all of my life you know when no one could t really explain to me what the Trinity was about, but yet, you know, everyone believed in it, but now I know why. Because it's false. It's, all of that was false. SubhanAllah. So, anyway, I said, you know, I want, I want to become a Muslim. At that point, I said, you know, you've shown me enough to where I, I'm very convinced. At this point, I really didn't show you enough. Know, I didn't really know a lot more, you know, except for what he and I said I wanted I wanted to become Muslim. I can't you know, this is this is the opportunity of a lifetime to possibly, you know, do what I need to do in my life to fill that void. You know, and to get my life back, you know. And he's like, Well, okay, well come back here tomorrow And I said, Okay <laughs> I'm like all bummed out, like, Oh man, I gotta wait another day? Why? You know, I want to become a Muslim today. I was just like the most impatient person in the world. You know, I wanted everything to happen right then and there. 
But then the next day came and I said, okay, now I want to be a Muslim. Still. And he, the, the brother who was telling me about his son, he also was interested in marrying me. He wanted to marry me as well. So I took my Shahada and I think that <laughs> SubhanAllah. So what I thought I was married. But yeah, I took my Shahada. It was 2003. It was a day, I believe it was a day before. If anybody remember back in 2003 when they had that massive blackout, when the lights just went out all over the United States. I don't know if anyone remembers that. But that was one day before that happened. That, yeah. A day before that happened, I took my Shahada. That was in August, I believe. August 2003. This was right before Ramadan. And the same day that I took my Shahada and got married to this brother, where I thought I got married to this brother, um, I got ki- we both got kicked out of the shelter we were living in because they didn't they heard that he converted me, and they didn't want any more Muslims living in their Christian shelter, so they basically kicked us out. <laughs> so, so well, I didn't care at this point because I was just happy to be a Muslim. I can I can only try my best to describe how being a Muslim felt, you know. It, it was like, you know, the most refreshing feeling, like the world was just lifted off my shoulders. I didn't have a care in the world anymore. It was almost like being a kid again, you know. It was like being a kid again all of a sudden, you know. Really. Like, I didn't care about nothing except for, you know, trying to please my Lord, you know. I didn't have no worries. I didn't, you know, I didn't really have the stresses that I had. I didn't, I, that, that void was filled. Alhamdulillah, I didn't, I felt like a whole person. I really did. I did not feel like I was lacking anymore. Taking the Shahada was the most intense thing that I could have ever done. And I don't regret it. And it was the coolest thing in the world, you know, subhanAllah. I could go on about what happened after I took my Shahada. <laughs> but I'm not going to bore anybody else with any more extra details. But alhamdulillah, I'm glad that I found a song. I told my whole family about it. You know, even though they are not very accepting. <laughs> to this day, they accept me. They they haven't seen me in the cob. But if they did, I'm sure they would probably abandon me like a hot pocket. <laughs> Seriously. But they've seen me in hijab before, and they're pretty okay with it. But they just they think that I'm in a phase, you know. Yeah, I get invited for birthday parties, for Easter, for Christmas, for New Year's, you know, like, hey, you want to come over, we're going to have drinks and all this stuff, and I'm like, oh, I don't do that more. I only celebrate two holidays, two Eids, that's it. I don't celebrate any of these Catholic holidays anymore, alhamdulillah. But my family, especially my father, he is in extreme denial. He thinks that I've gone off the deep end and I need to be committed to an insane asylum. <laughs> but, you know, the last time I talked to him, he was, he was okay. But he wasn't okay with me being a Muslim. And mashallah, I have four sisters and three brothers. Four sisters and three brothers, including myself. And so I know I have a huge family. Alhamdulillah. So I know what it's like. I have a big family, you know, and all of that. But anyway, I uh, I hope that my uh, I hope my story benefited everywhere and and I hope that anybody who is not Muslim that's in this room, I hope that uh, they've benefited from it also, and maybe even get a, you know a boost and wanting to learn more about Islam. Now, mind you, I, you know, for those who are not Muslim that are in this room, I don't know who is and who isn't. But, you know, I come from a background of confusion. I didn't even believe in, in, in Christianity at one point. You know, I just did not care. I, I, I've claimed agnostic. I've claimed all kinds of stuff, you know. <laughs> I even tried to be, just practice Zen at one point in my life. So I, I went, I, alhamdulillah, I didn't go through complete disbelief to the point where I didn't believe there was no God at all. Alhamdulillah for that. But, you know, 
I was close. <laughs> I was really close, you know. But Alhamdulillah, Allah guided me to the straight path to Islam. A beautiful religion that has no confusion. Everything is straightforward. You know, there is no, I don't understand this. I mean, there is no concept. There's always an easy explanation to it. You know what I mean? It's not, well, you just got to believe in it kind of business. No, there's an explanation. But anyway, I'm going to get off this microphone. My husband's here. Uh, Bizarre to Allah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.